Hey, John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com, and we're continuing with my homegrown hop series. I just named it that. I've done, I'm going to do three beers. I've got two that are done. One, we did the American Brown Ale with, uh, what did we use in that one? That wasn't, um, that was Nugget Hops. We did uh, basically all Nugget Hops in that one. Oh, and then I had my brother's Cascade that I dry hopped with. But this is a American Pale Ale with all Chinook Hops that I grew in my backyard. And I'll talk about the recipe straight from my noggin because I didn't, you know, bring my notes over. So it uh, was a five gallon batch. Uh, the boil size was seven and a half gallons because when I'm using whole hops, I gotta get a lot of volume because those whole hops will suck it all up. Um, so the, so the, the batch size was five gallons. The grain bill was as such like 10 pounds of raw two row American malt, uh, American pale malt. Uh, I did a, I think a pound of uh, Munich malt to give it a little color and a little malty uh, thing going on. And that was the grain bill. Uh, maybe a little like a half pound of, uh, of carapils for, you know, some head retention. Foam. Yes. And then the hops were as follows, seven ounces total and Holy I really cow. went for it at the um, 60 minute mark. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna be tasting um, four ounces uh, for 60 minutes of a boil, and then right at flame out, I put uh, the other three ounces into this. Um, really trying to get a little more, um, I guess, aroma at the end, but like more of like the, fl I, actually, this is kind of a test batch. I wanted to see like how much bittering I could get out of these homegrown so that this is kind of like the experimental one. Uh, believe me, when I put it into fermented, I'm like, oh, this is bitter. So have fun with this. Uh, I have enough Chinook hops to do another recipe where I could like adjust the, the uh, addition times. The water chemistry is tap water filtered with a uh, Camden tablet to reduce the chlorine. Um, the yeast strain was one packet of US05 just sprinkled right on top. Sprinkle. And then because I have to siphon out of my kettle into the uh, fermenter, I did an aeration of like <laughs> five minutes yep. of just shaking it, hydrating the yeast, all that stuff, um, so on and so forth. Just barely got five gallons into the fermenter. I don't know about, I don't know if it's just because, uh, I don't know, raw, uh, that malt is, I don't know, super modified, super fermentable, but like the fermentation took off right away. I would say like within like less than 12 hours, I saw like krausen and then it just was strong. It was just like a strong ferment for like five, six days. I'm like, I don't think this is that fermentable. I mean, my, 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 my starting gravity wasn't that high. I think it was like, right 10, at five. It was 1050, right? <laughs> no, 1050. Um, and this, this finished around um, 1011. Oh, that's nice. Yep. And so no dry hopping. I did not do any dry oh, hopping. I wanted God. to see what what came out of this. And so with all that information, Mr. Mike, please tell me your notes from appearance, aroma, and then all the other things that go along with it. Uh, well, so I remember the last one, you know, we weren't so enthusiastic about it. And it was one of those examples, I think in the video even said, yeah. you've done a lot of homegrown hot beers. And They're okay. Some of them are okay, yeah. but very few are like, like worthy, great, right? worthy. <laughs> but I think this beer, um, this one, is an order of magnitude better than anything else I've ever done. Yeah. Um, it is, there's an aroma to it, without dry hopping it, there's an aroma to it that is, um, there's like a grapefruit, like the fruit, mm. not the pith, there's a nice grapefruit, orange, tangerine aroma in there. Mm. It's not super strong, no, but it's, it's but it's definitely it's noticeable. Yeah. I mean, it's faded now that I've ha we've had it out here. Yeah. But I mean, some dry hopping it with the same to the same vein would probably amplify that. Yep. Um, mm. There is definitely a dank Chinook huh. American sea hop quality to it, but it tastes great. Mm. And even though you said four ounces, the bitterness is just strong enough. I mean, I, it's a little more bitter than beers that I want to drink regularly. Yeah. But as far as what you would expect from an American pale, pale ale, it is ripe, 
it is there. It's right at the right amount of bitterness somehow. Like just good choice. Yeah. Good. I mean, it's it's bitter, but it's not upsettingly bitter. I mean, people who like this type of style of Ameri like American West Coast yes, pale ale. That's it. This West is right Coast. in the camp. This yeah. is this is one hundred percent right there. The the you know to put it in perspective. I think the bitterness level is on par with the bitterness in, say, Sierra Nevada Celebration Ale. Hmm. Like that's the that's the level no, of IBU. Yeah. That's the level of IBUs I'm getting. Yeah, at, I'm like right? that. The flavor is different because that's more like a Centennial yep. base beer. Um, this is a little bit softer in terms of its flavor profile uh, than than like straight up Centennial is. Yep. Like you know, uh, but. I'm telling you, I'm digging it. I love it. Good. I, I mean, if I was in the mood yeah. for a hoppy beer, this is the this one is I want to yeah. have. This is great. So, yeah. So I'm I of all of the three hop plants that I have in my backyard, I was psyched about this one last year, and now I think I'm in year three of um, growing oh, this one. This one is killing it. And so, yeah, I'm really happy about this one. And I think that might be also um, a note for the viewers. That if you're going to, you know, grow hops in the backyard, um, stick with the seas. Like I, I don't know. I, I have to like brew I something like with, yeah. with my brother's like Cascade. It, again, his his is a little more. I think it was like a second year, so it wasn't as mature. I think that if he can get me, you know, close to eight ounces of um, of, of hops dried, like that weight, then we could try to do something and see really how it comes out. Yeah. It's just, I think nug, that nugget is, it is what it is. It's a woody, earthy yeah. hop. And again, I, we're, I'm doing this so I can get a good sense of what these hops bring to the table from my backyard. Yeah. <laughs> terroir. So, ter true exactly. Terroir. But this one, this this plant brings it, and it's like, it's and it's also probably the strongest of the three. Even though that my magnum is the oldest, I think that it's like, I got to do something with it. I, I Yeah. <laughs> it's like... You should see the uh, the root ball. Oh yeah, it's like coming out of the ground, and it's like this thick. I'm yeah. like, oh my god, it's like taking over. I need to figure that out. Yeah, um, it's like this mutant thing coming out of the ground, but the the Chinook is just beautiful. They're like it comes up, and then I mean it comes up. I, I have it like a, a, a string or a rope that goes up the side of my house, and then as it gets to the top of that, it comes down, and so, so it's like the, kind of this big. You know, is this, is this the one monster. that's on the corner of the house where yes. you brew? Yeah. Okay. That one. That's so people it. have seen that one in, a, in yes. shots when we're shooting at his house yes, in the backyard. Yes. And yeah. driving. Yeah. You know, actually, I think that that might have been the banner for our YouTube channel for a while. I oh, actually yeah. get up on a ladder and took a picture. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I'm telling you, this beer is like, um, we make a lot of, not to toot our horns, but we make a lot of good beer. Yep. Right. But this, as far as like American pale ale with a hop punch, yep. This is right up there with any commercial beer that I've bought recently that is of this vein. Well, there you go. So fermented for two weeks, around 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I just let it go. Again, like I said, like that first week, yeah, it was just going strong. And yeah. the thing is, the other thing was, the um, the American brown that I brewed previously same situation i don't know if it was just like because i used i got, I got a 50 yep. pound sack of uh, raw yep. two uh two row uh, malt and it's just it's just a strong ferment or something i don't know like I, I i was using like pilsner uh for some of these american ipas and like it just didn't kick off as as quickly these have been like oh my goodness what's going on like i have like this much krausen going on in my fermenter and it's, it's taking off very quickly yeah um so yeah two weeks and then i just kegged it like you know uh right before this video so like maybe it's probably it was probably like um like three days before we're tasting it now so yeah boom so that's that so again like um <laughs> What's the takeaways? Like, I know I said, like, eh, homegrown hops, they're just okay. I think that if you can get yourself on some of these really nice, um, I, I don't know, for, 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 for people here in the U.S., when I look for uh, rhizomes that's, that are available, you know, I, th I think I've seen Cascade, definitely Chinook, because I have that. Yeah. Columbus? I've got Columbus out there. Yeah. Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just killed that theory. I don't think it's that. I think it's it's also like the establishment of the plant, yeah. how it's growing. I mean, I'm not really 
taking care of mine very well. Yeah. Um, that homegrown hot beer that I made not too long ago was absolute garbage. I, that whole keg got dumped this past weekend. Yeah, I'm sorry. Because it's garbage. It's just total yeah. garbage. Um, but it's fun to grow them. I'm still yeah. going to grow. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to split the rhizomes and grow them even more. Right just because. Why See not, what happens. Right? Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with the C uh, hops. And I, I would definitely that's... make sure that this plant, because it's, it's fall more. now, like when you're ready, when you finally cut it back, whatever, I'd make sure I would mulch that baby, get, <laughs> get some nice compost in there for it next year so it's really happy because yeah. um, something, something's going right with, that's this, great. with this guy in your yard. So. Cool. Um, I, can, I can make a joke, but I'm not going to, like, about, you know, composting it or something <laughs> with my own um, compost. Um, I'm glad you went there. I didn't. Um, all right. I guess that's it. So one was okay. This one's great. I have a magnum plant. We're going to do a lager, which I've talked about. I've already, like, hinted towards that. Maybe we'll do a video to show off, like, yeah. hear me throwing, like, whole hop cones into yeah. well, yeah. which we've done before but like I think there's something yeah. magical magical about seeing that so thank you appreciate you watching this video hopefully you learned something um, if you like this video give us a thumbs up subscribe to our channel hit the notification leave a comment you know maybe maybe you've had experience of growing at your own C American hops at home and had a good experience with it and stay away from Nugget and whatever he's doing with yeah, Columbus. Yeah, because I have Nugget and Columbus. I think. <laughs> garbage. Total garbage. <laughs> but John and Mike, brewdashshoots.com. Brew on. Cheers.